Moving plants and carnivorous plants are a novel concept popularly portrayed in science fiction horror of the botanical genre. We all know little short of horrors. But in reality, moving active plants are a real thing and go beyond the Venus flytraps of bug-eating fame. While they certainly do not hunt humans, the reality of motile plants and carnivorous plants is worth discovering. In this list, we discover plants that are motile and carnivorous, simply carnivorous or simply motile in some other way. The phenomenon is known as rapid plant movement, which could be abbreviated as RPM, recalling measures of mechanical motor speed. Number 10. Bladderwort Ponds may seem tranquil and filled with leisurely and strange waterbugs going their different ways, but below the surface, minute networks of bladders lurk. They are connected to their plants and await the chance to snap shut, capturing food coming into contact with the bladders. Insect-eating or otherwise carnivorous plants are frequently associated with land-based environments, but bladderwort lurks in aquatic zones where water is fairly stagnant but populated with ample minute prey. Insects, worms, and other invertebrates may be eaten by these plants. Native to lakes, slow-moving rivers, pools, and even waterlogged ground, bladderwort species are found digesting their prey all around the globe. Lacking any roots, the bladderwort plant relies upon the capture of live prey to provide essential nutrition to keep the plant alive, along with the benefits of some photosynthesis. Certain larger species, such as the greater bladderwort, may eat larger prey items than mere insects and microcrustaceans. Vertebrate prey items, including small fish fry and tadpoles, may be consumed by large bladderwort species and turned into liquid nutrition. Bladderwort plants sport attractive flowers that protrude above the surface of the water, catching the eye of human admirers and pollinators alike while the feast goes on below ground. Number 9. Trigger Plant Pollination apparently takes work and effort to bring consumer results. The trigger plants are almost entirely restricted to Australia, where they pollinate insects by selectively reacting to certain species and choosily opting to release their pollen in a trigger-like fashion on some insects and not others. Upon landing on a trigger plant, the insects will be struck in what seems like a predatory assault. They will be hit by a trigger mechanism. But the trigger plants do not kill the unwary insect. Instead, the insect is being forcibly fully dusted with pollen through this strike. Once that action has been deftly completed, the insect will leave the flower, landing on another flower seemingly unbothered. This next flower, upon which the insect is preparing to land, will be primed to receive pollen, completing the entire pollination cycle. Interestingly, the plants are considered to be semi-carnivorous, since there is evidence that in addition to being pollinated by insects dusted by their striking mechanism, sticking hairs positioned on the flowers and below the blossoms can also lethally trap miniature insects. The trigger plants appear to be able to subsequently harvest and digest the carcasses of these little insects to a degree, gaining a measure of nutrients from their remains. Number 8. Tropical Pitcher Plants Tropical pitcher plants do not exactly move around or wave and clap like some carnivorous plants, but their methodology of trapping it is brilliant. Elongated stems contain pitchers with an enticing fluid that brings insects close to drink. Then they fall to their death and nourish the plant. Native to old world tropical regions, they can be very large, but they are nowhere close big enough to do anything to a human. The liquid in the pitchers is not only attractive to passing prey, but is also highly viscous, resisting attempts by captured victims to escape. Incredibly, not only insects, but rats may be eaten by particularly large species of this plant. While infrequent, the trapping of such mammalian creatures does occasionally provide a good dose of nutrition to the well-adapted plants. Opportunistic drinking behavior by monkeys has been observed, where these cousins of humans steal from the plants by drinking their trap fluid and then leaving, being much too large and powerful to be targeted by the plant. Number 7. Sensitive Plant Well named, the peculiar sensitive plant looks simple and ordinary, resembling a small fern, but moves like lightning as far as a plant is concerned. It folds its leaves upon being touched. Furthermore, the motion can be set off at any time with a simple human touch. The plant, also amusingly called a shame plant or shire plant, is a native species of Central American and South American regions. The plant actually sweeps its multiple leaf fronds inwards upon contact with humans. The dramatic movement is clearly visible in a matter of seconds and recalls a folding Chinese fan. The species is successful, having spread all over the globe in suitable climate zones. However, the exact purpose of the folding response to any kind of touch to the plant's leaves remains the subject of speculation by botanists and plant fanciers alike. Possible reasons 
options for the folding put forward include avoidance of predators or a way to avoid excessive losses of water in warm environments, which could potentially damage the delicate leaves. The plant typically grows under larger plants such as shrubs or trees, and while originating as a vertical stemmed plant, develops a trailing habit over time, sometimes reaching five feet in length. Number six, sundew. A frequently mentioned species among greenhouse enthusiasts, sundew species are also one of the worst plants that insects can encounter. Occurring on all the world's land masses, save for Antarctica, sundew are essentially stubby-looking plants that deceptively attract insects, hold them fast, and then dissolve such prey in a digestive process, all with the help of their numerous glands that extend from the plant in stalk form. Comprised of leaves and stems with club-like glands covered in fluid secreting tentacles, sundew plants are eye-catching and perfectly adapted to catch insects that are drawn to the plant. The sweet compounds released by the tentacles not only appeal to insects, but function as a type of entrapping glue once sampled. Furthermore, the all-purpose compound contains numerous enzymes that begin digestion of the prey once trapped. Due to the secretions of the fluid sparkling in the sun, sundew plants sparkle brilliantly in the light, making them a top choice for enthusiasts, although they are notably hard to grow. Number 5. Waterwheel Plant Beneath the surface, little-known carnivorous water plants are busy making their best effort as gatherers of aquatic prey, primarily small insects. Bladderworts are not the only category of plants engaged in this activity. The interestingly named waterwheel plant boasts wheel-shaped leaf structures that extend from the central stem. Peculiar in appearance, the entirely aquatic plant is a voracious consumer of insects, crustaceans, and other tiny aquatic animals that get close enough to be captured and consumed by the plant's feeding apparatus. The global distribution of species includes parts of Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia. This plant has hair triggers which, if touched, will set off the prey capture response. At any moment, prey brushes against the hair triggers the traps close at high speeds, going from open to shut in either a quarter or half a second. Interestingly, the aquatic adaptations of the plant might mask its surprising true identity. While resembling some types of pondweed at first glance, the masterfully adapted catcher of tiny water animals is actually a relative of the much better known Venus flytrap plants that hunt airborne and crawling insects. Number 4. Telegraph Plant while many moving plants are well known, even notorious for drowning and devouring insects in vats of digestive fluid or slamming spiny trapdoors shut prior to feeding on them, a simpler purpose for being a moving plant does exist. The purpose of the telegraph plant's movement is to maximize its ability to harvest sunlight. Native to the Asian tropics, the plant is known for moving its leaflets at a sufficient speed to be detected by the human eye. Standing upright with tall straight stems, the green plant with purple flowers bears oval-shaped leaves leaves with spindly attachments to the main stem. Like a living sundial, the leaves align themselves by tracking the movement of the sun as you watch. Also known as the dancing plant and semaphore plants, the telegraph plant is a species that was first described in the year 1880 by Charles Darwin himself. The environment in which this plant typically grows is the rainforest, where this remarkably well-adapted plant must compete with taller species for available sunlight. Number 3. Squirting Cucumber Cucumbers might not come to mind as the most active of plants, seemingly heavy and sedentary vines that produce massive edible fruits that are treated more like a vegetable. Yet there is a type of cucumber that defies imagination and takes seed locomotion to a dramatic new level among cucumbers and other members of the squash family. The Ecbalium genus of plants, known as the squirting cucumber, possess a remarkable means of spreading their kind. When ripe, squirting cucumbers, true to their name, blast out a stream of fluid that's filled with seeds. The fuzzy-leaved plant achieves its results by producing grenade-shaped fruits that launch seeds up to 20 feet away from the plant. Interestingly, squirting cucumbers, unlike the plethora of edible squash species, are absolutely not to be eaten. Any piece or component of the plant may result in death if consumed by humans, being highly poisonous. The strange plants have a hairy and dark appearance with a size of up to two feet, while the fruits may measure two inches in length. Squirting cucumbers are native to dry habitats in the Mediterranean region. Number 2. Venus Flytrap The Venus Flytrap may be incredibly famous for good reason, but this species that is on the surface familiar actually deserves deeper coverage than it usually gets. 
Not only insects, but small frogs can be caught and consumed by this plant. Native to North and South Carolina wetlands, the Venus flytrap was flagged by Charles Darwin as a plant species that was one of the most wonderful in the world. Venus flytrap plants can grow up to five inches in height, while each individual trap on the plant is lined with spiky teeth that act as bars, imprisoning an insect caught when the trap is triggered. Once caught, the insect is digested by juices and nutrients are extracted from it. Then the trap opens again and the inedible parts spill out, leaving the trap ready to capture a new meal for the plant. Incredibly, the Venus flytrap is smart, being programmed to count taps from an insect before committing to a capture, preventing debris from being trapped and an ill-fated digestion attempt being made. One tap puts the plant on alert, two shuts the trap, while three initiates digestion. Number 1. Witch Hazel Witch hazel may be familiar as a medicinal herb, but like the sandbox tree I talked about previously, the plant shoots its seeds up to distances of 30 feet. Four species of witch hazel plants occur in North America, while China is home to a single species, with one species also found in Japan. Used for external medical applications, the plant is a seemingly ordinary-looking shrub, typically growing low and being located in the forest understory layer. An exceptionally late bloomer, witch hazel is commonly the final shrub to produce blossoms in North America. The seeds take an incredibly long time to reach maturity, about one year. As a result, seeds from the prior year are often juxtaposed with blossoms from the current year. When the seeds are ready, the stored-up kinetic energy they hold is released in violent and spectacularly effective seed pod bursts. Maximizing the spatial distribution of witch hazel seedlings, seeds from exploding pods are spread around in a BB gun fashion before sprouting into new shrubs. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do hit that like button below. Do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, check out my other channel. It's called Biographics. There's a link to that on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.